What's up everybody? We're here in the Classic Motorsports workshop today. We're working on some wiring and we figured what better time to go over how to test a switch um, with a basic multimeter and a little bit of know-how. Um, right here we have our Ron Francis SP-70 switch panel kit. We're installing this in a 65 Mustang along with a bare bones kit to get the car up and running. Um, this kit is available separate from the bare bones kit, but it complements it very well. Next to it, we have our Lucas switches from an old British car. We got headlight switch and we have a two position switch. Very simple switches. We're going to go over testing your input output, making sure the switch works and making sure it's worth putting in your restoration car or deciding to move on to something a little more modern. All right, for simplicity, we're going to start with our Ron Francis switches. Um, these are simple on off on switches and a momentary switch so you'll get the basic idea and we'll move into the more complex switches um, so right here we have our momentary switch and then we have our three position on off on switch so we'll go ahead and flip this over you can see the momentary switch has two legs the on off on has three legs so we'll start with the momentary switch what we're going to do is make sure our multimeter is set to ohms because we're testing resistance within the switch. What you need to do on the switch is identify your input and your output. On this two position switch momentary, the input is going to be on the top and the output is going to be on the bottom. We have this wired as well to light up a light when it is on so we know that the switch is working in the car while we're at the race. So we've got one leg of our multimeter attached to the input. We're going to stick the second leg on the output. You can see right now it is open loop. There is no continuity. The switch is not active. Now when we activate the switch, You can see we have resistance in the switch, 1.1 ohms. That tells us that the switch is working and there is continuity through the switch. So that switch is obviously good. And that is basic way to test a two position momentary switch. We're going to repeat the same process. The idea is the same on the three position switches as well as the more complex switches, as well as the OEM switches in your modern car. So what we need to do again is identify our input on this three position switch. It is the center lug. So we're going to attach one leg of our multimeter to the center lug and we're going to find one of the outputs. So that is one. You can see there is continuity to that. And when we go to the other lug, there is no continuity. We're going to go back to the off position and back to the on position, the other direction on that switch. You can see we get continuity. And we'll go back to the first lug and there is no continuity. So those are our two positions on the switch with our one input, two outputs, depending on where you have the switch selected. Um, you can repeat this process with six position switches, two position switches, momentaries, on-offs. It's all the same principle. So now that we're done with this, we're going to show you a more complex Lucas switch. That way you can learn how the circuit works and decide if that's what you want to keep in your restoration car. All right, so first we're going to do this two position Lucas switch. Again, you're going to identify input and output pretty easy on a two position switch. You can see right now in the off position, we are open loop, no continuity. We switch that to the on position and we get continuity. That tells me that this switch is good. Now, if you switch it to both positions and you have open loop on either one, you're either on the wrong output or the switch is bad. In this case, it is a two position switch, so it's pretty easy to tell if you're on the wrong output or not because there is only one. So we know this switch is good. We're gonna move on to a more complex headlight switch. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five lugs. And this 
switch can get a little confusing. We've actually looked up a diagram to tell us which switch is in which position and which lugs are active or not. So there's three positions on the switch and each position is doing something different for us. On this one they are labeled one through eight with five of them being there, three of them not there. So we're going to attach to lug number one and when we are in the first position which is up we're actually going to have lug number one with six and seven being active. So we're going to find our numbers on here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we want to test from one to six. You can see we start to get continuity there. Contacts are a little dirty, so we're going to have a, a little bit of an off reading. And we're going to go to seven and verify continuity there. This one's a little cleaner. You can see we have a nice, good ohms reading. You can go to the other lugs and see that we have open loop. No reading there because those are not active in this position. Now we're going to go to position two and find out which lugs are active. So we're going to start with number four, open. Number six, we have a reading there. Number seven, we also have a reading there. Number eight, we're open. So in position two, we again have six and seven. Now we're going to go to our third position. Go through them all again. Start with four. You can see we get a reading. So four is active. Six is open. Seven is active. And eight is active. So now you know with your input what outputs are active and what position. Now with a factory switch like this, you're mostly hooking them up to a factory wiring diagram. So you don't have to worry too much about guessing which wire goes where as long as you can pull up a service manual with the diagram. Um, if you're using this switch to control other things after market, this is a quick, easy way to tell what lugs are active and where to run your outputs from. So there's your basic theory behind continuity and switches. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's inputs, outputs, and making sure the power is getting to where it's supposed to go. This same theory applies to any switch that you want to test, whether it's in your modern BMW or your vintage Triumph, Austin Healey, Ford, Chevy, all of them work the same. You're going to have an input and an output, and the switch is going to determine which output actually is active. All right, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop some comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Support brands that support classic motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.